Joining me now is Nathan Gonzalez, the editor and publisher of Inside Election. So, Nathan, taking a look specifically at what's going on in Georgia, $8.3 million is quite a bit of cash, but 95% of it is coming from outside groups. Uh, can that affect turnout in a really significant way, enough uh, to get us off uh, into the seat without any runoffs? Sure, absolutely. Well, $8.3 million, just for a little bit of perspective, that's more than some what we thought were top-tier Senate candidates raised in an entire cycle. And John Ossoff raised that in three months. He'll probably get to $10 million, uh, at least by the time this race is over. And uh, I think Democrats are using it effectively. One of the things that we haven't talked about recently about this race is that uh, a couple key things. First of all, I think credit has to go to Daily Coast, the uh, liberal blogging community, for kind of getting the fundraising ball going and, and showing that Ossoff could be a viable candidate, but also the DCCC uh, put field staff on the ground, helped the Ossoff campaign build an infrastructure so that when this money came in, they were able to do something with it. Uh, I remember back in 2008, uh, a couple weeks before the election, Congresswoman Michelle Bachman went on hardball. Uh, she, it was a disaster of an interview, and all this money went to her, her challenger, Elwin Tinklenburg, but he just didn't have the infrastructure to take advantage of it. But right now, Ossoff is running basically a luxury campaign that, that most candidates just dream of, and including turnout. Uh, Democrats have been leading in the early and absentee voting in a district the Republicans have generally had the advantage, but they are turning out some voters who are not, they're low propensity voters. They have not voted in the past. And that is key because if this district, if everyone who normally votes, votes, Republicans are going to win. But they are changing, it looks to me like they're changing the shape of the electorate and having more Democrats come out. They're using that enthusiasm. And if they can change it enough, that's the recipe for victory. What about what's going on in Kansas in what should be, and, and normally is, a ruby red district? So we've had uh, all of this attention. We started with the march after the inauguration, then there were these town hall protests. Everyone in the kind of the Democratic uh, community started to focus on Ossoff, but on the way to Georgia, Kansas pops up. And all of a sudden, there was a little bit of, uh, there was some panic on the Republican side and excitement on the Democratic side saying, well, maybe we can challenge here. Some of the fundamental differences are that Donald Trump won Georgia's 6th district by just a point. He won the Kansas 4th district by 27 points. So is That's this a more huge... more a Sam Brown back, uh, backlash than you can say a Donald Trump backlash? I think it's a little bit of everything. I think it's. I think Donald Trump is driving enthusiasm in the Democratic base. Uh, Sam Brownback is one of the least popular governors in the country, and that includes some Republicans in Kansas. I think Ron Estes, uh, from the sources that I've talked to, has run an underwhelming campaign. Uh, maybe he's trying to be something. He's not trying to be sort of a Tea Party candidate when he's really an establishment Republican. Uh, and he's so. I think it's a mixture of factors. And we also have to remember that James Thompson has really been ignored by Democrats. Democrats until the last few days. I, there was a clip a couple weeks ago where he was asking for $20,000 from the local party for mailers, and he couldn't even get that. Wow. And, and, now, and now everyone's focused on, well, what's going to happen in the 4th District You know, tonight? how effective is it for Ted Cruz to come out and give just a slightly modified version of his presidential stump speech? Well, this is a district that Ted Cruz, Ted Cruz did well in the primary. Uh, I think it helps draw attention to the district. You know, for people who aren't really paying attention, Ted Cruz, in the, within the Republican Party, Ted Cruz is a notable name. And uh, so I think it could help. And with the combination of the robocalls, if Republicans can get up to normal turnout, they'll be okay. But if there's any sort of apathy combined with Democratic enthusiasm, that gets to be a problem. Do Democrats need a win in both Kansas and Georgia, or just one win in Georgia and maybe a close call? In Kansas or if they lose both. Uh, tell me what the, do, do the Democrats need in order uh, to call it a win? That's a great, that's a great question. Uh, I don't, it, let's put it, if Democrats, if Democrats win in Kansas today, there will be uh, a, uh, there will be panic on the Republican side like we haven't seen before. I think there'll be panic if they lose, if they lose Georgia, but uh, these results, if, let's say D Democrats win both, it, it actually doesn't necessarily mean that 19 months from now they're going to automatically take the House. It'll be a good sign. Good point. But let's say Dem if Democrats lose both and, and also lose in Montana, then uh, that doesn't mean that they're not going to do well in, in 2018. Let's remember in May yeah. of 2010, r Democrats held a special election in Pennsylvania. Six months later, they lost 63 seats in the House. Good point. That is a lifetime, an absolute lifetime in politics. But still, uh, regardless, we will be keeping an eye on the polls because uh, we always love to, to find out what's going on in the polls, of course. And it would be an interesting, <laughs> it's going to be an interesting race.
period. Uh, thank you, Nathan, Nathan Gonzalez. Appreciate your time. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.